Hey there, I want to show you a little more on this 16 by 20 acrylic portrait. I want to talk to you today about using cooler colors for shadows in areas where you'd least expect it. So on this portrait, I'm working on the woman's red clothing. And if you look in the reference photo, I'm just going to zoom in there and show you what I'm talking about. The value is quite dark. And so you might think, well, this is all red. I should use red to get these dark values in here or black. But I would say, no, that's not what you want to do. Rather, you want to use blue. Um, we're not going to use a straight blue, but we're going to use blue mixed with a little bit of brown, which in this case would be uh, one of my favorite colors, raw umber dark. And so um, let me show you how to do that. I'm going to zoom out just enough so that we have it trained on her clothing. And uh, I break a few rules, I suppose, with the way I do my portraits and the glazing technique. But um, this works really well. So you're going to take ultramarine blue, and you can see it right there. Mix it with some matte medium that's clear acrylic without the pigment. And that just makes the paint more translucent. You can see through it. Add a little bit of this raw umber dark. It's a very dark brown. So we're going to use those two colors here. And we're going to add that. We're going to add that to this point right here. So if we used red, the color would get too vibrant. And so uh, the rule of thumb is when you get darker in your values, the color should be less vibrant. And the way to do that is to use a cooler color. So uh, a little bit of raw umber dark ultramarine blue and voila we still see the red underneath because again this is translucent but it ends up darkening that whole section and it really blends nicely with everything else so this is what the color looks like on my white card you can see it as it goes over the translucency and the actual color we have here kind of a a bluish gray it's uh, more blue than, than gray. But what's nice about this is we can keep this color going. I could actually paint this on top of the other part of her sweater, this outer part, and that'll darken the color as well. So it actually works for both of these colors. So that's really cool. You don't have to uh, switch to a different color. I use the same color both to darken this area under her chin and also to darken this part of her sweater. Now, I don't wanna stop there, I wanna continue it on because when we look in the reference photo, that value is darker throughout. So we're going to just zoom out a bit here and you'll be able to see how this works then. We use this on the left-hand side of her sweater just to integrate these colors in here a little bit. And then we add a little more to the bottom. We'll just kind of blend this in. So it's nice about this is it works super well for all these colors. Now I can add a little matte medium and just make it a little more translucent and then distribute this out because we're gonna expect that the value is gonna be a little lighter on the interior of the arm. We have the shadow on the bottom corresponding with you know, the light source. But uh, that's really how it works and so it's a really nice way to uh, darken the, the values of your colors without having to remix them all. And that's the beauty of the glazing technique. It does take a little, a little bit longer to paint this way, but you really get some good shading, luminosity, and it's just less intimidating because you don't have to get everything right on the first try, as I've said in other videos. Uh, but we can continue this process here, keep the video going a little bit longer. I want to show you how this works on the man on the right side. We'll just zoom in a little bit here on him. Just get that so you can see the whole thing. And we're going to use the same kind of technique there for him. Same, same glaze. Use a little bit of this bluish color. Now we might find it's a little too strong as I put it on there. So in this sense, I might have to adjust it. But that's okay. Just add a little raw umber dark to the same glaze. We'll cancel out some of the blue. And I'll show you that on the white card. This is what it looks like. All right, so you can see that. That's the previous one underneath. It's a little more of a grayish color that we've got right here. And so we can just use that 
and that works I think a little better with the rest of his clothing and I'm using kind of a dry brush technique a dry brush technique to really um, get the nuances in here and that's where you kind of let the amount of paint on your brush exhaust right out all right so it's there's not much on my brush if I go on the white card it looks like this and you can see textural marks it's there's not a huge amount of paint on there but it does allow me to really feather it in so I like to use this technique a lot for just gradually blending in some of these different tones and it doesn't work for everything you can't use it as much on a face but you can use it on clothing where you'd expect there'd be a little more texture and there it works fine. I'm just going to continue adding some glazes here to the top part of the shirt as well. Getting some different tones in here on his shirt. Alright, so we have some warmer tones and cooler tones interspersed and that really gives it some added depth and interest and realism. Um, so we have some warmer tones in the lighter areas, a little bit cooler tones in the darker areas. And I just really like how that looks. But there's a long ways to go on this. But this is, uh, this is the process. So I just want to share this with you. And I hope this, uh, hope this helped, showing you how you can use the glazing technique to darken the value of more than one color at a time. And then also this nice uh, blending technique using a little bit of a dry brush to get some shading and gradation on your portrait. So, hey, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel. I'll send more videos like this. And go to realisticacrylic.com where I have several uh, tips, tutorials, and classes that you can take to paint a portrait you can be proud of. So check that out, realisticacrylic.com. Many of those classes are for free. So uh, hop on over there and I'll be happy to help you with your portrait painting journey. All right, so thank you so much for watching. God bless, we'll talk to you soon.